the, the chair recognizes himself for five minutes. Um, it was said earlier today, uh, Mr. Kampau, that uh, that the board that this um, group of witnesses are not diverse enough. I wanted to know if you would like to make a comment to that. Oh um, well, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I guess I'd just note uh, that the comment was the question was about whether we're from different you know backgrounds and different experiences, and I just I, I was. Um, I was born into very humble circumstances and uh, lived in government housing as a as a child and grew up stirring my powdered milk into water and eating, uh, you know, uh, not it was uh, it was uh, those those early times were uh, were challenging. But my um, my mother uh, worked two shifts on the road crew, uh, building roads for us, and my father started was uh, helping to build a small business. Um, to get us out of those circumstances, uh, out to a little home in the country, and um, so that you know my my childhood was uh, was wonderful. But uh, it, you know it's, we certainly started off in very humble circumstances, and I watched my parents, who did not have college degrees, work very hard to get us out. So that was my background. If the comment is about background and experience, um, and my grandmother's from Mexico, I mean I have. Uh, you know, uh, I guess it maybe doesn't look like it if I'm sitting here in a suit in front of you today, but I'm honored to be here. Uh, thank you for having me, and um, pleasure to be part of this well, conversation. Thank you. It's it's an honor that you're here. Thank you. Um, it was said earlier in test, but uh, in a question that uh, that the Republicans or or um, transportation is trying to change the 1500 hour rule. Um, ironically, the transportation committee was actually passing the FAA authorization bill across the hall that had no references whatsoever to the 1500 hour rule. However, it did uh, have a reference to the age um, of that we force pilots to retire in commercial airlines from 65 to 67. And so I think that may be where the confusion is, but to touch on that subject, um, Professor Mulligan, what is the implication or how does it impact the economics of the airline industry, of the cost to the consumers, and really to the individual, when when this body arbitrar arbitrarily picks a date like, you know, the age, forced age of 65 for retirement. I mean, one of the problems with regulation is, is it doesn't adapt well to changes, and you know, companies have to adapt to change, otherwise another company you know, beats them out, they, they lose customers, et cetera. And, and adapting, we've had a lot of changes in the last couple of years um, with, in, in personnel areas, and it's, uh, it's been tough on airlines in many industries. And, and so the costs are then bore upon the consumer, right? And the individual who, is, is, who potentially could have saved more money, waited to retire at a later age, um, build more wealth, that those options are not available. That's right. Um, so, and I think this may be a question for Mr. White. Um, when it comes to, are you familiar with the anti-delegation doctrine? Yes, I am. Okay, maybe, maybe this is an opportunity to nerd out about this topic, but um, you know, the Constitution is very clear in Article One, Section 1. It says, all legislative powers herein granted shall be vested in a Congress of the United States, which shall consist of the Senate and House of Representatives. What's the history of, and what, what is the authority that Congress has to actually violate the Constitution and give up that authority to, to the executive branch? I could spend a semester on this, so I'll just say very briefly, from the very beginning of our federal government, the Supreme Court and the rest of the government recognized that Congress would sometimes need to give some discretion to the departments, but giving away too much discretion to the executive uh, risks the effect of basically transferring the legislative power itself out to agencies. So from the early 1800s onwards, the Supreme Court and others have grappled with this. Sometimes it's informed the way that Congress read statutes, sometimes it has spurred the Supreme Court to declare statutes unconstitutional because they were so open-ended that they in effect gave Congress's uh, legislative responsibility to another branch of government. What is the, are there any any court cases going through today that would be, that would touch on this topic? Well, 
Yeah, there are coming up through the lower courts. The case I alluded to earlier in the Supreme Court regarding the CFPB's power uh, funding structure is in many ways a delegation case. Congress, in effect, delegated its power of the purse out to the CFPB. But cases like West Virginia versus EPA and others involving how we interpret statutes, they're very much infused with these similar non-delegation principles. Thank you. My time has expired.